On that note, our excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Janice Cobham, like uh, I have earlier been introduced, and uh, I'm the panel moderator for this uh, segment, and I have my older panelists, I'll just call them, and they get to join me here. I have a new one in Neo from Government Technical College, Main Avenue, Calabar South. Please make your way forward. Joining her also is Joseph Essien from West African People's Institute, Calabar Municipality. We also have Juliet Arginia from, um, let me get that now, Mathias of Foboche Secondary School, Okuku in Yala. Please come up stage. And uh, we also have Obasi Odam Nkasi. Please make your way up the stage. And finally, we have Precious Ode. Precious Ode, please make your way up the stage. Okay, so I've just been informed that our time has been cut short, so we'll just go directly into our conversation today. Um, but uh, like the theme says, innovative strategies for quality education in Nigeria, we have a sub team which is peer pressure and its impact on learning or education, as we may put it. And as we all know, you know, um, young people these days, this is very natural for them to want to compare with their other pairs. But sometimes it is positive, and most times it is really, really negative and somewhat very disastrous too. So our focus today is on peer pressure and its impact on young people. But with the little time we have, we'll try as much as possible to educate and uh, sensitize every young person seated here today on what peer pressure can actually do, not just affecting them educationally now, but also affecting their life in general. So I have my panelists, and uh, it's good to welcome all of you here. Please, can we get the microphones working? Thank you. OK, so as way of introduction now, let's look at the basics. What do we understand, or how do we perceive peer pressure? Because some people will have different ideas of what peer pressure is. So anyone, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, first, I will start by defining the word peer. Peer can be defined as one of an equal rank in qualification, social stat um, status, um, age, and also pressure can be defined as a intimidation or persuasion. So peer pressure is a persuasion or the intimidation we get from our peers to do act in a certain way, either positively or negatively. Okay, so let me talk to Obazi now. Do you, do you perceive it any differently from what anyone has said? Let me talk to a guy. Obazi, please hand him over the microphone. Okay, peer pressure can also be seen as the impact your friends have on you or that say they have over what you do and how you behave. It's that, let's say, it's the power they control you with. That's basically peer pressure. Okay, it can so be negative or positive. Okay, so when you say negative or positive, how do you mean exactly? Okay, thank you for that question. So negatively in the sense that if you have friends, the negative impact of peer pressure is being determined by the kind of friends you keep. So if you have friends whose thoughts are negative and also are, are not on the right track, possibly they can impact you. And then it is said that you're a product of the first five people around you. And then let's consider your peers, that first five, so that could impact you negatively. That's when you have yourself surrounded by negative people. And then positively, if you have yourself surrounded by people whose thoughts are right and cope well with society, with good dreams and aspirations, you will certainly be inspired by them. When times you feel intimidated, they'll tell you, guy, you can do this. They'll tell you, this is who you were meant to be. You aren't like every other person. That's the positive aspect of peer pressure. Well, peer pressure has more impact negatively than positively. All right, thank you very much for that one. But there are a lot of young people that will sit here today and just think that, okay, so we're just talking. We've never had that experience. Do we have any experiences that we've gone through peer pressure? And then how did we try to come out of it? Uh, Joseph. You know, talking about peer pressure, um, sometimes, um, we, have, we, are, we are adolescent and um, where we have the greatest vulnerability of um, being pressurized to do things or in, a, in order to feel among or conform to a certain 
um, ideologies of certain social groups. So I, way back when I was um, um, in SS1, I had this um, scenario where I was pressurized by my friends and it really, really affected me badly. So I really, really didn't want to go down to the, to, to the details or tell the story of how the whole thing happened because it, it, is, it has been a very, very um, big experience and it was very, very sad. Going back to, um, to revive a memory that I tried to bury back, it's very, very, um, it's not easy for me. But just to um, say a bit on that, when I was in SS1, I got, um, okay, I had to change friends due to the fact that I left my junior class to my to senior class. And then meeting many people, I met someone. I met a girl in my SS1 and also met other people. And then it got to a stage where I had this intimacy with the girl. So I was more close to the girl than apparently many other guys or many other people. I don't know. So they said, they tapped me. Okay, they told me that I was the girl boyfriend and the girl was my girlfriend. And I was trying to attack that, but they kept hitting and hitting and hitting and telling me, okay, go and ask the girl out. Let the girl be your girlfriend. Or, besides, other people do this. If you do it, it won't take your life. But I told them, that is not my value. That is not my, um, my, my own view. And that's, by the way, that's not what brought me to school. So I have to focus on what brought me to school. And they kept pressuring. They kept pushing. And then so in the kept, long run, what happened? What and then, happens to you? <laughs> I, know, I know we are all interested in that story, but we just have 15 minutes. Okay, go on, hon. Go on. She just, she just got my story shut. And I feel bad about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. At the long run, I, 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 I got, due to the pressure they hitting on me, I got depressed and it was a very, very sad experience of, of my lifetime, of which I never think or wish to any other person. It was, it was a terrible experience when I had depression. Okay, so, so they want you to go on with your story. So, in the long run, what happens to you? What did that do to you in the long run? Um, in the long run, when I got You wanted you to date the girl, yeah. and you didn't want to date her, yes. because you had your values and your principles. Yeah. So, what happens to you at the, in the long run? Okay, that worked with my mental stability, that worked with my mental thinking, because having to go to school, and now seeing people that are telling you what you don't like, are now forcing you to do it, like, I do not want to go to school. So I wake up in the morning. I don't feel like going to school because I know that in school there you wouldn't have peace of mind. You have people talking, talking, talking. So sometimes when I go to school, I just decide to sit down on my own and then don't talk to anyone. And then it affected my learning scheme. I lost my I lost my strategy of um, of learning because of the depression. And I also um, okay. I dropped grades in school and it was very, very, very bad for me from from second position down to eight, and that was very, very, very bad. And I wouldn't even see or advise anyone to be, or I wouldn't even see or wish to anyone to go through depression or peer pressure because it's a very, very awful feeling. Okay, so we'll come back to you because uh, we need to know how you got out from that, uh, you know, particular situation. Okay, so is there any other person that has some form of experiences that you want to share? Okay, Julia, go ahead. Thank you very much. Well, it was in my school. I was pressurized to go out to play a game. And during that time, I had to read for a class. And that class was going to add a grade to me. I was like, are you sure it's going to help me if I should, like, don't read and go out for games? My friends were like, yes, it's going to help you at least. If you play, your brain will rest. You will know how to read fine. I was like, are you people sure? I didn't really want to go out, but they pressurized me. So I went for the game. I forgot to read and also missed the class. So the next time, our teacher noticed and he was like, I'm going to punish you for missing that class. I told him what happened. And he forgave me. Well, coming out from peer pressure is really difficult. 
it's really hard it's just left for teenagers or young ones like us to make a difference if you are in a peer pressure definitely if you make a positive change someone too might follow your footstep peer pressure right now the aspect is that the negative aspect is very very much the positive is just a lead to so in order for you to overcome or to come out from peer pressure make a difference i know that in you you don't want to succumb to peer pressure you know that if you should enter peer pressure or if you should follow the negative peers you know how it's going to affect you peer pressure can affect any aspect of someone's life not necessarily their academics make a difference make a positive change change the mind of the negative ones to a positive one and definitely someone will follow your footstep okay so any other person you have an experience to share very very quickly before we look at how this pressure can actually affect us as young people academically as well for me my experiences of peer pressure i would say we were doing the right thing at the wrong time because in today's world i know that creativity is very essential so because my peers they brought we were learning how to make beads of different designs so anytime they come to school they will bring these beads and we will learn different designs though creativity is essential but i got so addicted to making these beads that at the point i realized that my grades started dropping from 9 to 8, from 8 to 7, from 7 to 6. And I realized that this is not what I wanted for myself when I got to school. So I had to spend more time reading because I used the time I read before to create these beads of different designs because I like them. So I had to, when I realized that it was affecting my school, I had to use more time reading than doing these beads of different designs. And at a point, I overcame the addiction. Okay, so we are going to talk about how we overcame the addiction and how we came out of peer pressure. But uh, I think Obazi has something to say in terms of experience very, very quickly. Our time is running okay, out. Okay, my experience was with games. Okay, I'm a pro gamer, so I loved games so much. Most of my friends um, love playing games, PPSS, PP, PS, PS games. So I guess I love, we all can relate. So I loved playing these games so much that I collected the game and then every now and then normally by 11 i wake up to read but this time i took my mom's phone and then we played this game from 11. i continued this thing it is said that what you do for over 14 days becomes a habit so i continued it and i couldn't stop i saw myself the time i was supposed to read i saw myself playing games and then i told someone in church uncle this is not what i want to be this is not how i like to live and then he told me you can stop yourself actually make a purposeful determination Okay, I went back home. I said, I'm not going to play this game today. I slept. Unfortunately for me, I woke up by 11. And I could not sleep back. I took the phone and played it. Half time, I, like, I played the game for some hours. Half time, I said, wait, I'm actually playing this game. Home. So I was thinking I would go and read. My brother was playing the game. I was reading. I was looking at the game he was playing. Then I was telling myself, who am I fooling? Am I deceiving myself i looked at the game i said yeah in fact i have time let's go and play this game i continued this for a while i told uncle uncle i've done this again he said you know your failure actually is not your parents concern he told me your parents have about four children if three of them succeed and you fail they are already successful <laughs> and then i looked i was like will i be the one to beg my brothers for money to play this game i said it can't happen so I slept again. I woke up at 11. I took the phone. I played the game. I was like, at some point, I said, this cannot happen. I started sleeping in another room. I kept the phone in my brother's room. So I woke up again by 11 the next day. I will run and peep out and look into the room if anybody's there and go back. I was not like, who am I hiding from? Am I hiding from myself? If I'm hiding from myself, why can't I just stop? I decided that I will lock the door and sleep inside. Then I won't wake up until I won't play that game until I've woken up. So I slept. That was I was consciously trying to keep playing the game. I slept in that room. The, the, I know that there was no way I could reach it. I did. Yes, thank God. So Imagine okay. that 
the how, love. Did, how did that affect you and your education? Okay, I'm the kind of person that reads and then I have lots of ideas about many things that have not been thought. So then, there are so many things that I'll say in class, I'm like, this is new to me. And then my grades dropped a lot. Many, most of my, I wasn't that serious again in school. I hated school because I preferred my gaming life. I preferred my gaming life to school. I hated school and then I was like, this is not what I want to be. I want to be a neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeons deal with the brains. And then, will I watch my brain go down this drain? I told myself, I can't live somebody's life. I got this because of my friends. And then, I got this saying. This saying inspired me. I told myself, if I am living a life because someone else is living it, I don't have a life. I'm living someone else's life. So I have to own my life. And the best way to do it is to do what I want, when I want, and how I want it. I never wanted to play games, but influence got me in it. Finally, I closed the doors every night. I started sleeping without the games. Normally, I woke up by, I would wake up by 11, and then I would just pick a novel and read. So I rekindled my reading habits by reading novels. I didn't start all over again by but reading see, time is books. Going. Sorry. I didn't start again by reading school books. I preferred reading novels so I can build up the habits back again. Okay, so very quickly now, I'm sure there are young people seated and listening to us. And maybe for one reason or the other, you know, they are the verge of giving in to peer pressure or they are already neck deep in it. So how did you go through it? You went through depression. You said you went through depression for close to a year. How did you come out of it and get back on your feet and started getting good grades again in school? I'm really, really glad that my story is um, enjoyable by this audience. <laughs> you know, you know, it's. it's I'm not also saying you should go back to your story. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us okay. how you were able to come out of it, because someone seated here wants to learn something. It's not easy, like you all said. It's not easy to come out of peer pressure. It's it's a struggle. So how did you struggle out of it? You walk into a thing and um, you took a process to, to get into that thing. And to get out of that thing also, you need to take a process. And getting out of that, okay, let me see, in the midst of my depression and all of that, my friends got to notice that this was really, really affecting me bad. And when the British Leadership Foundation came to my school and um, Mr. Favor Lily, he met me. At that point, I, I was almost asleep in class. I was just heads down due to the traumas and stress. My friend called me and told me, you need to see someone. I told him who, you should leave me alone, I'm tired. He said, you really need to see this guy. Come, let me show you to him. And I told him, why are you not, okay, what is the problem? He told me, you need to get involved in the club. I told him, because since, since I told him I needed a therapist, and he told me, I guess this guy is gonna be a therapist to you, just try him. And I, I told him, okay, I accepted and left the class and met Mr. Ili outside, outside the classroom. And so what did he do? He spoke you? to me, and I told him how I felt, and he told he told me, you know, you are who you are, and the best way to find yourself is to forget, is to try to learn how to forget. The higher time you forget things, the better for you. Forgetting, you have to first of all forgive yourself. Don't blame yourself for anything. Then you would gradually go out from this thing. You know, then it was difficult at first to get out of that place. But I told myself I'm who I am. I mean, I'm a different person. I don't have to act like this because people are acting like this. Let me be myself. I tried building my values and I told myself, attack. When I met my teacher for counseling, he told me, attack what your problem is, what you like. And because I loved drawing and I, I took that as an approach to fighting how I felt. So reflecting how what I'm feeling inside was drawing out my piece. So I'm drawing out what I'm feeling inside of my people. So I'm the only one that understands the interpretation of what happened, what is happening to me. So I try to use drawing to replace that 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 broken part of mine. So if I, if I, my, my, my words to people sitting outside there is that if you are going through peer pressure, you need to identify who you are. You need to have a self-esteem. 
you need to identify who you are have a personal value you know what you like if you know what you like people would never ever talk you down to do what you don't want to do all right thank you i i think there's something i'm noticing here okay so he talked about um the experiences he had and he also talked obasi also talked about the experiences he had and in trying to solve all of these problems they were talking to people other people outside their home which means there's a disconnect. Why weren't you talking to your parents? You didn't tell your parents about what you were going through. So what, what's, why is there a disconnect between... Okay, yeah. Let, let you that speak. Well, the reason why we don't really connect or open up to our parents is that they won't really understand us. They won't really reason with us. Let's say, for instance, now, I walk up to my mom and be like, Mommy, I have a boyfriend. Before I even complete a boy, slap has landed on my face. They don't really act like if it were to be I am American parents, they want to know the boy's family. But Africa, no go area. So so that's why we really can't relate with our parents. We they really can't see reasons, no matter how we tell them they will not really understand nor know what we are going through so that's why we rather tell people of our age who will understand us because our parents are <laughs> okay so i i, I think juliet i think juliet only used that as an example a girl her age can never go to her parents that she has a boyfriend it's just an example please let's forgive her <laughs> okay so and also our parents do make us feel as if they've never made mistakes in their life. Yeah, go ahead. They make us feel as if we made the worst mistakes ever. Like those scold us and then do lash us with serious beatings. And do also when you make a mistake, do use your past as a memory, like they remind you every time. It's like we have parents that are not agreeing to this. Parents, do we agree? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so who else has something to say? Okay, Precious, please For go me, ahead. I feel that most people do not, most children do not talk to their parents about what they face because they do not establish that relationship with their parents. So I feel that if you establish the relationship with your parents to a point that you can tell your mom or your dad anything that bothers you, there will be no reason why, I don't see any reason why you cannot tell them. I okay, think so the, I think Obas is disagreeing with you right now because he's okay, shaking his head. We don't establish that relationship because I think our parents are not worth establishing that relationship. Oh, wow. I will say that because times have evolved. You no know more cheat. You no know more teach children with the cane. Come on, we won't let. We'll rather grow hatred for you. That's the truth about life. We'll rather grow hatred for you. The world has evolved. The way they do things evolve. Sitting us down to tell us our problems is better, rather than make, rather than painting us bad and making us feel ill. So I guess people outside of who has passed through what we have passed through are better people to tell our issues. You know? Okay, so very quickly now, because there are so many questions coming in. I can, I can also say that um, the reason why we don't really relate to our parents, well, what happened, what's happening to us, uh, how we feel is fear of being sanctioned. You know, you have this, you tell your parents, um, I did this. And the first thing be like, the, the first question to ask you is that you wouldn't even be able to answer the question. Why, why did you do it, you know? A teacher, okay, when I met my teacher, he was able to explain to me that if you are feeling a certain way, um, it is normal see in life. A stage has come where you've grown. Sometimes your innermost person has grown bigger than your, your physical uh, person. So he told me that your mind has grown, but it seems your body is not growing. So he found an approach to relate with me and kept it low. You know, for your parents to be like, if you've told them they managed to to forgive you for the wrong next time that time 2020 you did this thing 2021 you did it i forgave you today i will not forgive you don't flog you beat you and all that and also 
keep reminding you of those memories you are trying to put behind bars, and right. it's very, very bad. All right, Joseph. I, I think we have lots of questions coming in, but seriously, uh, from this conversation, that I, I think that there's a disconnect somewhere, you know, between children and the family and their parents as well. But we are also going to be asking what's the role of teachers in all of this, because, and then again, I'm wondering, why are children afraid of being sanctioned? Of course, they sanction, the typical African parent, they will use slap and redefine your, and reset your brain. So if you were going wrong, you just have to use the slap and get you back to the right, uh, you know, path. But we, we, I think we're open for questions. I hear we have questions. Listen. Other questions you want to ask these young people? So while we're waiting for the questions, I think I want to use this opportunity Ma, to commend the British Leadership like, Foundation. Like our parent, they are like doing really great. Like our are scared of asking you those questions. We need questions. We need to answer questions. <laughs> we want See to answer. answer. No, calm down. Calm down, guys. Calm down. I think we have a, quest, a question. Two questions. Very quickly now, please. Are you guys ready for the heat? Because it's coming. Yes, ma. Let's go then. Um, let's take our mommy here first, and we'll come to you, sir. All right. I, I want to thank God for this opportunity, and I thank His Excellency for bringing this together. I'm very, very happy. We are parents. Many of us are pained. Because in our time, we didn't know Indian him, drug addiction, ritualist, all sorts of occultism. In our time, I'm telling you, I'm 55, I'm going to 60 very soon. Your mother will not even know where you are going to now. Now, nowadays, children are very, very stubborn. They don't want to listen. And at 13, I will tell you the truth. My son started smoking and he was already in a cult. He was already in a cult group. I did a lot to bring him back. I prayed all the prayers I know. I tried to talk to him. He would stone me. Let me tell you the reason why. The reason why is because some parents are not with their children all the time. When you have separation between husband and wife, such children are the ones who will suffer. Those children are not with their mother. They may be with their father or with their mother. So something is missing. So because of that, you cannot have a perfect child. But there are children whose parents take them to school and bring them back, you know, make sure they monitor them to do the assignments and all that, I watched that, my children, my sister's children grew up, they grew up very well, and today they are in perfect places. So I want to ask, if you come from a broken home, or you are from this home where your mother has to go to the market by six o'clock, will you not pity your parents, and begin to organize yourself by yourself, and know that cow when no get tail, according to Prince Nico, now God they drive and fly. Okay, okay, that's one question. Um, so that's one. You take note for that one question. Take another question now, and then we go back to the students. I wonder why it's just the parents asking questions. There are no students asking. Hello. Uh, please. I have two grown-up boys. They are taller than me. And I know how they behave. Panelists, I want to ask you, why is it that when we forgive you and draw you back and cancel you, it's not derailing from that offense. You will quadruplicate offenses. Okay. Um, 
One, one house, please. One, one house, house, one house. One, one house, house, please. Okay, so who is going to be responding to that? Um, like mommy asked, why don't you guys just listen? We have very stubborn children. That one, we cannot uh, talk too much about it. It's, it's the truth. We have children that are really, really stubborn. And then um, I think uh, daddy also asked a question. I, I can't get that correctly right now. So just. Okay, so concerning mommy's question, you don't expect us children to know what to do. And then the way you tell us what to do is not the way we want to be told. The way you tell us, okay, you can't, let me use this sample. Telling your child, let's say you want to tell your girl child, don't get pregnant. This is the way most parents do it. If you get pregnant, I will beat you. I will send you out of this house. First of all, you have not given me a reason not to get pregnant. I only know that if I get pregnant, you will beat me. You have not told me the repercussion. And then, if you get pregnant, you will stop school. You are telling me the consequences. You are not telling me what should make me not... You are not telling me what should make me avoid getting pregnant. Okay, now, let me answer that question. Let's say parents can sit their children down and then tell them, this is what you will face. The society will reject you. The society will reject you. All these friends you're seeing now and around you, they are just for a while. Like one of my mentors here said once, friends end. That's the last three letters of friendship. Friends end. So, first of all, the reason children don't listen to parents is because Parents have failed to make us their friends. Okay, Obaze. Is that all? Please. Our time is up. Like, they are on my toes right now. So, you want to ask, answer the next question, yeah. please. Yeah. Just quickly do that because we need to wrap up. Yes. I, please, I, I plead that. Um, so, that is saying that, that sometimes when you're forgiven, you still come back and... I, I want to use this word. Okay. 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 Um, a lot of times is that human in human nature normally Adam and Eve God told them don't eat that fruit on that tree. What did they do? They ate the tree. They ate the fruit. Now we are children, your own fruit. And it is said that what a father did, a child somehow has the Alright, thank you so much. So. Thank you, thank you, Joseph. Thank you. So, what you're trying to say in essence is you're leaving the footsteps of your parents somehow. Please, war room, war room, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we've been able to pass a message here. One house, please. One house. You've been please. able to pass Let's a message here that peer pressure is very real. And a lot of young people are going through those things. And like statistics has it, it says Nigeria is the highest number of, has the highest number of out of school children in sub Saharan Africa, which means that peer pressure is one of the things that are pushing our children out of school. So by saying that now, it's more like all hands should be on deck. Parents from the home, which is the basics and more like the foundation, to governments in putting out policies. And of course, to our teachers who are also trying their best to make sure that, you know, these children go through good tutelage. And of course, the society as well. We all have a part to play in making sure that our children, you know, do not go through all of those things. Because if we do that, the girl that carried a gun in the uh, secondary school in Nakapabuya wouldn't do that. If we also play our part, those children that leave school during school hours and have morphed in their bags and go to a, a, a hotel to swim wouldn't do that. So all hands must be on the plow. I just want to say a very big thank you again to my panelists. And everyone, thank you so much. Uh, Joseph, uh, Juliet, <laughs> Juliet and uh, Obase, and also Precious. But before we go, let's show you something that uh, Joseph did because he was able to come out of that space where people were telling him, look, you just have to date this girl. It was out of his principle. It was not part of his values at all. Let's see how that has been able to shape him to be who he is today. Thank you. Should I show you? <laughs> Okay. 
This is the first work. I I don't want to see how tall I am. I'm not very tall. My parents are not tall. So <laughs> this is the first work I have representing the hunger in uh, my society That's and how happened. children are being are starving. And the second work, yeah, the beauty of a woman, you know. You know, I, I, I learned that uh, a woman is one of the most precious things that God has ever created. Is that the girl? Is that the girl? Is that the girl? Is that the uh, girl that oh, we oh, asked to date back in school? No, I... <laughs> Who is your muse? <laughs> okay, is that the girl? <laughs> is that so the girl? Who is she? We all okay. want to know. This, this lady in Ivory so caught my inspiration and oh. I said... I should make something. But I really have my greatest masterpiece here with me. Show us. <laughs> I like See, the If you can do something, show Shakara. That's I am doing Shakara for what I can do. If you can do something, show Shakara, show Shakara. to bring your own. Whoa. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, please would like to crave your indulgence. So please come up to receive this beautiful piece of work, piece of art that was done for you. Hold on, he's coming up. Don't, just, just wait there. He's coming up to meet you. Please put your hands together for him. If you can show something, do Shakara. He has shown you that he has capacity. Please, mommy and daddy, make sure you frame this picture. Fantastic. Wow. Wow. Yes, yes, the person looks so much like you. <laughs> he, he, he uses a pencil. Can you imagine? Just a pencil to do this incredible work. Isn't this amazing talent? Uh, if, if, what did he say about showing Shakara? What did he say? If you want? Uh, I said, if you know how to do something, show Shakara. If you know how to do something, show Shakara. So, Bridge Foundation, show Shakara! <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'll always also like to use this opportunity to say that the Bridge Foundation, the Bridge Leadership Foundation, is one platform that has created great people, great leaders. All of those children seated here today are products from this foundation as mentees and myself standing here today and talking to you, I am also a product of this foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janice Cobham. Put your hands together for Janice, OAPC, ROPC and her team. Thank you. Thank you. Please keep clapping for them. I love how